depending on your point of view, depending on the tactica, the cataphract is either an updated and upgraded battle master. Now that's heresy right there because the battle master is, is truly an amazing work of inner sphere tech or possibly think of it as the poor man's battle master. And in the narrative, there's uh, this idea of being able to produce a mech at a higher tech level completely within one area out of older parts and, and focusing on some of the key factories. Uh, essentially, in the narrative, a higher level tech that can be quickly and easily mass produced on the platform of a heavy mech. So right away as a heavy mech, we're going to be exploring this mech from the perspective of can it get up there and can it do the damage that it needs to do? Does it have the armor? Does it have the maneuverability? And of course, does it have the weapon systems to make this possible? So we're starting out to look at uh, the LB Auto Cannon 10 and the Ultra 5. This um, one in either arm is going to give us some extreme range on there. It's going to give us the option um, based on the loadout on the 10. If you're going slug or if you're going what I think of as grape shot on there. So you have a role of um, essentially a PPC with much less heat or something that can kind of replicate um, a mini long-range missile type system with the spread, maybe some anti-air, um, maybe going against vehicles or infantry from that perspective. And then, of course, the Ultra 5 just giving you that extreme range and laying down that firepower. So from that perspective of comparing it to other heavy mechs and answering that question as a possible spiritual successor to the Battlemaster, that's what you're doing on the way in. You know, we see this on some of the other heavier mechs. Uh, let's dial it back and look at the Cyclops. I enjoy playing the Cyclops. You have that 20-pack so you can fire. As you're walking in, moving into your target, you've got some missiles to push out there. We have that in the 5 and then the 10 with some punch as you get closer. Uh, we could say the 10 is equivalent to the PPC on a Battlemaster. So now we get even closer on there. And once we close, we've got a brace of medium lasers. Now, in terms of tonnage, heat, damage output range, I believe it's universally accepted, and I would agree with this, that the, uh, the medium laser offers the best all around. We have redundancy here. We have four. But as you dial it down in the tech manuals, you realize it's got some rear-facing medium lasers. And this is, this is kind of hit or miss on there. Um, certainly, if you are playing a heavy-type mech, there's going to be two, in, two possible encounters that you face. And not only are you facing this, you're going to be trying to do this also. The first is, as you're on your way in with your heavy mech, you're going to have a bodyguard mech on there. Um, accompanying it. A, a great example would be something like a hunchback can do a lot of damage. So I move my heavy mech forward. I engage you. We're now heavies facing each other. We're, we're locked. I term this danger close. The idea that we are two, three, four hexes away, we're engaged just trying to mash those buttons as fast as we can to fire off everything we can. If I turn and run, the entire brace of your weaponry, because don't forget on, on a heavy mech or an assault mech, you have your long-range weapons on the way in, but you're going to have a whole brace of, of really deadly close-in fighting on there, even something like the Warhammer. I may not be able to fire both of those PPCs. I'll fire one on the way in, but when I get close enough to you and I get to that danger close, SRM-6, medium lasers, small lasers, machine guns, I mean, just, just everything I have, we're locked. I have my front armor. You have your front armor. Hopefully, it's going to hold up. If I break off or if I try to run uh, and give you my back, you're just going to savage me. And likewise, if I try to get to your side or rear armor, you're going to move. We're, we're literally in this dance. So you have a bodyguard mech, uh, in this case, the hunchback for this example, now breaking free and running around behind your heavy mech you're in a difficult place. You have to make a difficult choice. Engage that hunchback, 
and get savaged by me, let that hunchback with that auto cannon 20 mess you up. And it doesn't have to be a hunchback. You guys know I have a fetish for AC-20s. Um, it could be a Jenner. Do you, do you want a Jenner behind you on there? Um, even if you're an, an Atlas pilot, you get a Jenner behind, uh, there's some challenges. There's some interesting stuff going on there. So this now leads to this idea, if I have some back lasers... That's going to encourage that, uh, excuse me, discourage that a little bit. I, I, I've got some, so, something to do. So we see a couple of the heavier mechs, uh, the Dragon, of course, the Battlemaster, that you have those rear lasers. We have that in this mech. There's also this idea where not that you want to um, engage more than one-to-one. -one. Sometimes in Battletech, you're two-to-one, you're three-to-one. Sometimes with a heavy mech or definitely an assault mech, Based on the mission, based on the mission, and we always got to put the mission first, you might have to fight a delaying action. Um, maybe another mech got blown up and you're bringing up some reinforcements. Uh, maybe you have secured the mission objective and you're trying to make it off the table or to the dropship and you're going to feed one mech to just stay behind and hold everybody off. You might get hit with a crit. You might get your leg blown off, but, but generally a headshot, generally you can last if you're a heavy or an assault mech you know, two, three, or four turns. That doesn't mean the repair bill isn't going to be huge. That doesn't mean that mech isn't going to get taken out. But you are going to literally be surrounded, um, especially with initiative, no matter where you turn, you're going to be surrounded. Having rear-firing weapons gives you something, um, some sort of answer. Maybe not the most elegant answer, but some sort of answer. That's the thinking behind it. Personally, I think in a mech like this, um, with the auto cannons on there, I'd rather have those lasers all facing forward. I'm, I'm good with the medium lasers on there. I wouldn't look to upgrade them to like, uh, you know, large lasers kind of going in the Ost class series. I I'd stick with the medium lasers, but if we could get all of those facing forward plus the auto cannons on there, it is a forward facing heavy mech, but there are a lot of forward facing heavy mechs. That's going to give you a lot more forward facing alpha. The side tangent on here, the side tangent on here, jump jets. That's interesting. If you've ever um, faced off against something like the Victor or some of the heavier, heavier tonnage mechs that have the ability to jump, that combined with the tonnage, that gives you a couple of interesting options, especially in a city fight or kind of hilly area. Where if um, you know, you're engaged with another mech or you're engaged with something and you can see on the map uh, another lighter mech is moving up or, or some sort of asset that could easily be destroyed, to take a turn to literally jump out and jump into the lane of fire and open that up with the weapon systems of a heavy mech, that's, that's big. You know, it's, it's not make or break, but that is a definitive plus on the weight class and the tonnage on here. It's not a mech that is played that often. Um, speaking from my experience and, and my meta, I mean, I have one in my collection. I, I play it every now and then. But um, I would say it's a third-tier type mech, meaning I bring it out every now and then and see what we can do with it on there. I have the least amount of pilot hours on it. In your meta, is it something that you see? Is it something that you regularly play? And uh, ultimately, what assessment do you share? Poor man's Battlemaster, spiritual successor, upgrade to the venerable Battlemaster, where do you think it falls in?